Monza was definitely the closest anyone has realistically come to stopping Red Bull in 2023, but even that ended after just 15 laps when Max overtook Sainz and then never looked troubled again until he crossed the line to take a record 10th consecutive win. Ferrari were always going to be strong in Monza. It's a track which is much more similar to Baku, where Leclerc qualified on pole and then finished on the podium, and for this race, not only did they bring a much more low downfall setup, even compared to Red Bull when you look at how skinny and narrow their rear wing was, but they also had fresh engines for both of their drivers, just to get every last thousandth of a second that they could. Sainz was on it all weekend long, and surprisingly, especially given Leclerc's form around Monza, he kind of had an edge over Leclerc pretty much from practice. Charles said that he just couldn't get the right setup on his car throughout all of practice, and it was only once he decided to just copy Carlos did things finally start to click into place. Despite a little bit of controversy in qualifying with Leclerc not fully happy about the fact that he had to give a toe to his teammate during both runs in Q3, I think Ferrari kind of maximized qualifying as much as they could, with Carlos delivering on his and the car's potential by qualifying on pole position, with Max behind in P2 in an Italian Ferrari sandwich. I know Leclerc was a little bit frustrated after quali, but there's two things in life that are absolutely certain, and that is taxes, F1 drivers being frustrated at traffic around Monza, and F1 drivers being frustrated about a lack of a toe around Monza. In the end, I don't think there was any way for Ferrari to really qualify 1-2 anyway, because even if Charles did get a toe on a second run, I don't think Carlos would have put in a safe P2 lap anyway. Regardless, Ferrari starting 1-3 with Checo, kind of but also not really for him being out of position starting in P5, it did give the slightest bit of intrigue of what could Ferrari do against Max in a 2 versus one situation. At the start of the race, even though everyone got away and stayed in their quali positions, I don't think anyone ever really felt like Carlos was going to hold off Max for the entire race. To be fair, there was a moment for about 8-10 to 10 laps where I noticed that even though Max was plainly quicker, the slight edge in straight line speed that the Ferrari had meant that for just a few laps, Carlos was almost comfortably able to hold off Max if he focused on being fast in the right areas. However, the Red Bull's superior tire wear soon kicked in. Carlos started to struggle for traction out of the parabolica, and then when his tires started to wear off, he also couldn't brake as late into turn one. The Spanish wall lasted just 15 laps, even though Max wasn't as close as he had been on previous laps, the pressure alone made Carlos lock up, compromising his exit out of turn 1, and then Max with better traction finished the job into turn 4. I was actually surprised that Leclerc behind wasn't more of a factor or at least more of a nuisance to Max because looking at the race later on, or when it counted behind Max when Max himself was compromised by science, Leclerc struggled to even stay within Max's DRS. But then later on when the win was definitely gone, only then did he find the pace over Sainz. In terms of their battle however for that last spot on the podium, once Checo had dispatched of both of them, I mean what a fight. I am sure that I speak for all of us when I say that I was on the edge of my seat watching that and I thought that they were going to crash at least 3 or 4 times. I will say however that there was definitely a couple of occasions where Sainz to me just went over the line with some of his moving under braking, and then straight up just missing turn 4 and taking Charles with him. That is the type of manoeuvres for which penalties should be applied for, as we saw with what Russell did to Ocon. Sainz was clearly just desperate to at least finish on the podium, after starting on pole and then having to defend for his life for 15 laps. But even though I understand why he was defending so desperately, it still sets a precedent going forward. Looking back, there's nothing Ferrari could have done to win this race. In terms of strategy once Max passed Carlos, the undercut just wasn't an option because not only was it very early and would have left Carlos with absolutely no tyres at the end of the race, but Ferrari also didn't have a gap to pick Carlos into anyway. Some people might say that they should have ran with more downforce to help their tyre wear during the race, but then if they did, I don't think Carlos would have been on pole. The only 1% chance they ever had of winning was always going to be on having track position over Max. If they started behind, there is no way that they would have ever overtaken him on pure pace. 
For context, Leclerc in Baku held off Max for just four laps, whilst Sainz held off until lap 15. The only other race where another team got even close to taking a win away from Red Bull was Monaco, where I really think Fernando and Aston Martin, despite never actually leading, did pretty much all they could. Possibly if they pitted a lap earlier for the Inters, Fernando could have jumped Max, but the fact that I'm clutching at straws so much I think just shows how dominant Red Bull have been this season. We can't, however, not talk about Max Verstappen getting a record-breaking 10th consecutive Grand Prix win. I must admit, it's been quite hard watching Max and Red Bull in 2023 because I feel like I'm the type of person who can respect and appreciate greatness and domination in the moment, but I'd also be lying if I said that I've been enjoying this season. It's always a tricky balance because I think like many people, I've run out of superlatives to describe just how good Max has been. Yes, he's driving one of the most dominant cars in the history of Formula 1, but I said earlier in the season that the only word that I can use to describe him is inevitable. The car has been fast and freakishly reliable, which has been the foundation for this historic run. But he's also never put himself into a position where he's opened the door for disaster or outside factors to really affect him. When you look at Zandvoort and that mixed conditions race, and even the battle with Sainz, there was almost a carbon copy of what happened between him and Lewis in 2021 into Turn 1, for which I thought Max was more at fault for. But this time, he didn't risk anything and just bided his time. Dominance in F1, I have found, is one of those things that is always perhaps more hated in the moment, but then the more time goes on, I think we do look back a little bit more fondly and also respect those achievements more. Of course, with Red Bull and Max Verstappen being such a polarizing team, it's no surprise that not everyone was popping champagne up and down the paddock. Toto Wolff, after the race when comparing Red Bull's run of success to that of Mercedes in the early hybrid era, said, Our situation was maybe a little bit different because we had two guys fighting against each other within the same team. I don't know whether he cares about the record, it's not something that would be important for me. Any of those numbers. It's for Wikipedia. Nobody reads that anyway. For me, these kinds of records are completely irrelevant. They were irrelevant in our good days in Mercedes. I don't know how many races we've won or in a row. I didn't even know that there was a count on how many races you win in a row. Therefore, asking me for comment on some achievement is difficult because it never played a role in my own life. But the result itself shows that a great driver in a great car are competing on an extremely high level. And now, there's two things that I picked up from those comments. Number one, I thought his Wikipedia comment was absolutely hilarious because I do spend half my time on F1 Wikipedia looking at past results and just in general doing research for videos. Secondly, I wanted to read those comments out because clearly they come from a place of frustration and jealousy at Red Bull's recent success. In the same way that when Mercedes were dominant, it was Horner and Verstappen who were asking for rule changes and saying Lewis had it easy. Successful people being jealous and hypocrites is just the norm in Formula 1, and you just have to understand and accept that, even if you don't like it. For people who have had massive success in the past, it's not always easy to not be at the top. Like I said, Horner was the exact same in the early hybrid era, it's just not remembered as much because social media wasn't as prevalent. I also think that Max and Red Bull should be encouraged by those comments. Clearly their success is rattling Mercedes, and hopefully for Lewis, George and Toto, Red Bull's success is motivating them to do better in 2024. What Max has done is historic, no one can ever take that away from him, and even if you, like me, can both appreciate and be bored of his success in the moment, there is only one question left for the season. With 8 races to go, can Red Bull seriously make it a perfect 22 wins out of 22 races in 2023? Well, there you have it. If you did enjoy this video and want to support the channel, then don't forget to subscribe, that would be massively appreciated, and I'll see you in the next one.